Hey guys, and welcome to the Things Dan's Way. So tonight, I don't normally film at night, but uh, this was kind of urgent. My daughter's uh, T junction on her Ford Ranger, this 2003, has failed. Uh, and it belched all of the fluid out. The expensive and complicated and right way to do the job is to completely pull out this whole assembly. And as you can see, look how big this thing is. Multiple entry points. It's all one big you know, swaged together piece and it wraps all the way around the engine. Literally as you face the bumper, the first piece of it is attached to the bottom right corner of the engine. It goes around the back, over the transmission, all the way up the side, behind and around the exhaust manifold and up over to the overflow bottle. Uh, it's ridiculous and there's no way to separate it. And the only way to get the entire thing out that I found is either to drop the transmission out or to take out the power steering alternator and the exhaust manifold, and then you can pull the assembly out of the way. If you guys know better, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but what I found is what you can see here, just a very simple T valve that you can get. I'll have a link in the description down below. The simple valve and a couple of clamps. The trick is to get the glued on T connector out of the system. Well, it turns out because these things are so old at this point, you can use pliers of a couple different types and actually just crush the plastic a couple different ways and you can get that whole connector to basically fall apart on you and come free. Get all the pieces out from the inside, clean up the glue if there's any residue around there and put on a standard radiator retrofit T valve with the half inch and the three eighths, I believe, uh, out the top of the T. Uh, and so this is what we're gonna do right now. Uh, this is Doing Things Dance Way. Okay, so first step here is to prop up the truck and in this case I brought the back tire up on ramps just so that the car isn't leaning forward and that just gives us just a flatter plane to work on and then I've got jack stands under there as well so we're going to go ahead and pull this tire off because what we're trying to do is get in here I lift this back Back up in there is where we're trying to get. So if we look at it from the top down, we're trying to get right where my finger is. So from underneath and through the wheel well is the best way for us to get our hands at the problem. Well, our first step is to remove this little panel here or whatever's left of yours. There's obviously pieces that are supposed to be here, but go ahead and use a tool such as this guy to get under here and remove this panel, which I can't do with one hand. So what I ended up doing was just cutting, cutting this one off and I'll just replace it. I've got a, I have a whole kit that I'll uh, put in the link in the description below that of the uh, snap rivets, which is great to have a nice collection of those around to put these things back together. But with one out now, see we can just fold this guy out of the way. You basically need to look like this like with your hands all the way up inside. Uh, let me show you here. So take a hand and actually wrap it around all this mechanism. This is what you look like. You're basically got your chest up against your, uh, your rotor and uh, you got both hands up in there. We're basically working right above the starter, but this is doable. You can see our connector, our problem child there. So you can see the left side here just totally sheared off. And so um, we're gonna break the plastic off the rest of that just with some uh, like channel locks and try and get it clean without leaving any debris up inside, of course. Uh, so that's our next step is to see if we can just bust that guy up.
Okay, so here's another piece of it. This was the top little notch that came off. Now, I took this off. You didn't have to take this off, but I thought I was going to replace the whole cable assembly at first, so this wasn't uh, necessary. Uh, but just to show you here, all we're, this because this plastic is so brittle, it's just a matter of just crushing it. There you go. So you're gonna crush it, and then of course you have to get all the pieces out of there, or that'll be bad news. Now I'm cheating because I'm holding it, but you get the idea. So if you were up inside there, you would need to get something in there. Okay, so there it is cleaned out. Going for here, here's one end of the pipe. It's gonna go on there. And then we'll fish this up inside there and make make this last joint. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the pipe clamps on these two, uh, and get this fed up inside there. And then we'll just get that last connection cleaned up and installed. This one wasn't too bad to get to. That was a nightmare. So honestly, don't bother with either of them. Just try and replace this right in place. It'll be a little bit more difficult to get the the pipe clean because you'll be reaching up inside there. But uh, it's that's that's easier than messing with these and dealing with. Uh, uh, these pipes in the first place. Okay, so with this hose out, <clears throat> which didn't have to pull it out, but this is just be easier to show on camera. So when you put this clamp on, what you're going to want to do is imagine the pipe all the way together like this, and you don't want to have that clamp not be like this. You don't want to, you don't want to clamp down right on the seal. You want to clamp just behind it like that. So if you put the rubber down, it was like that. Imagine where the, that would be and just draw yourself a line. That way when you when you assemble this you'll know, okay, that's that's the line that I want to have the metal come up to. So it was all put together. There's my line. And there's my clamp. Now I didn't tighten it because I still want to be able to adjust the angle that this hose connects to. Uh, but let's go underneath the truck and get this piece in there. Okay, so at this point we have of our tube available. It's kind of hidden behind that wire. Sorry about that. That's the end of our tube. And then separately we have our other two that we're gonna feed up in here now. Okay, so I just wrestled on all three hoses. You can see here. I need to tighten them down, of course, and tighten them down at the right spacing so they don't crush the, uh, the little nib. But this was very doable. It was way easier than removing a transmission or an AC system uh, <laughs> for the sake of doing this. So, uh, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. This just lets you grab it. So, this is what you look like. You're basically got your chest up against your. Uh, your rotor, and uh, you got both hands up in there, which is why I couldn't really record wrestling this on here because I couldn't find a place to put the camera that actually could see anything. Um, it's so tight. But we're basically working right above the starter, as you saw there. Um, but this is doable, so let me uh, finish tightening this up and I'll show what it looks like. Okay. So I'm zooming in here. See, I got all three clamps on, and it's all buttoned up there. Got the other end of the two other hoses done, but this is the only connection you really have to deal with. You don't have to take off the other ends at all. Um, so that should be all there is to it. So now we just need to refill the radiator and start it up, 
and then probably need to refill it a couple of times because the system is extremely empty right now because it all belched out, <laughs> every bit of it. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so now that we have that completed up inside there, uh, just need to put our, our shroud pieces back on. Uh, if you don't have a, a kit like this, these are great. Every size of connector you can imagine in them. Um, I'll put a link down below if you uh, don't have one of these, but this is a nice kit to have when you've got all different sizes of holes to plug at the end of a job like this. Uh, let's get this tire back on. And that's the end of it. Um, I hope this was super helpful because uh, that was crazy awesome. Link up here to the guy that I found this on on his YouTube channel, pointing up how to do this, or at least how. Uh, the end result looks and so my goal here was simply to show you a little bit more of process on how to do it uh, so uh, hit up his uh, video as well give him a thumbs up give me a thumbs up hit subscribe below if you want to see more videos like this on doing things dan's way click over here for more videos on the b2300 and other uh, car repair videos i've done smash on my face to subscribe until next time guys be blessed